I'm Afshin Ratansi, just ahead of the 45th anniversary of the US-backed Chilean coup that brought British-backed dictator General Augusto Pinochet to power. Coming up on the show. On the eve of Chile's 9-11 and after the release of classified documents showing UK collusion in the CIA-backed coup that brought Pinochet to power, we ask former US Green Party vice presidential candidate Ajamu Baraka about what 9-11 means. Tomorrow marks not only 45 years since the CIA-backed coup that brought a fascist government to power in Chile, but 17 years since the USA's 9-11. Arguably, it's hard to recall how much support the United States had around the world as it mourned its death. From Moscow to Havana to Tehran to Caracas to the streets of NATO nation cities, people and their leaders gave their condolences to the American people. But then came the post-9-11 mistake that President Trump referred to in his campaign for the presidency. It was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. It's something both Moscow and Beijing have long said, but has 9-11 been forgotten by U.S. politicians? President Assad of Syria tried to explain to CBS's Charlie Rose, now in the news for other reasons, that U.S. military action in Syria was linked to 9-11, and not in a good way. This war is against the interests of the United States. Why? First of all, because this is the war that is going to support Al-Qaeda and the same people that uh, kill Americans in the 11th uh, of September. What country would de facto support those who attacked it? As Trump's pick for Secretary of State has said, the USA is exceptional, unlike a perceived enemy like Russia. This is a, this is a unique, exceptional country. Uh, Russia is unique, but not exceptional. The USA is surely exceptional. 17 years ago, after the 9-11 attacks, Al-Qaeda was the enemy. It was also the enemy of Britain. And some might say Britain is exceptional in supporting those who have attacked it, too. They are bound together by the single evil ideology of Islamist extremism that preaches hatred, sows division and promotes sectarianism. And yet, as the international community, including Russia and China, now work with President Assad of Syria to destroy al-Qaeda affiliates, let alone ISIS Daesh, what has Theresa May been saying up until even she stopped UK taxpayer funding of those said to have links to al-Qaeda? We need a political transition to a Syria without Assad. But then Theresa May has long been in a party on the wrong side of history, from Mandela to Allende. And it is on 9-11 tomorrow that Salvador Allende and all those that disappeared as a result of a US and British-backed fascist coup will be mourned. Well, one man who has campaigned ardently against Western interference in foreign powers is Ajamu Baraka. He's a former US Green Party vice presidential candidate and joins me now via Skype from Colombia in South America. Ajamu, thanks for coming back on the program. What happened on the 11th of September, 1973? Well, you know, that was a day of, of infamy. It was a day in which uh, signaled a very aggressive turn by the Western powers led by the U.S. Uh, to overthrow all of the progressive governments that were still in existence throughout the world. Uh, it was a day in which not only did they overthrow the uh, Allende government, uh, but in the aftermath, they imposed a, a new model one that uh, became known as neoliberalism. Yes, Milton Friedman, the Chicago School of Eco Economists, often talked about in context of uh, Chile. Just give us some context yourself about the violence uh, in uh, 1973 on September the 11th and its immediate aftermath, kill killings, torturings and disappearances. It was a, a, it was a situation that can only be characterized as internal um, social terrorism. Uh, the Pinochet forces were... Um, uh, committed to wiping out any traces of the Allende government and, more importantly, uh, popular support for that, for that government. So we saw and we know that there were people who were tortured, uh, uh, thousands disappeared, uh, and many, many people lost their lives. The, the direct numbers have always been in dispute. But, but what, what was important about, about Chile also was that it signaled a, 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 um, to, to progressive forces in the region and really around the world, uh, that the U.S. and Western forces were committed to using maximum violence in order to protect their model. Uh, direct military intervention, uh, political destabilization was going to be the new weapons 
not new, but the weapons that were going to be used uh, to uh, to undermine any progressive attempts uh, to advance a progressive uh, and radical agenda. Britain's Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson resigned quite recently. A new person is now here, Jeremy Hunt, and he tweeted it was an honor to meet Henry Kissinger in a... Uh, he, he tweeted that um, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, still the echoes of September the 11th, 1973, in a tweet like that? Of course, and is, is, is relatively consistent. Consistent with the decision by the, the Blair government um, and, the, and the positions of uh, many people in the, the current uh, government in Britain. Uh, and it's consistent with... Uh, sort of generalized Western opinion when it comes to uh, people like uh, Kissinger. Uh, and because that's Kissinger really the, was involved in September the 11th. Kissinger was the, the, the architect. He's the one that gave the green light. You see, in Britain tomorrow, mainstream media, if it's going to cover uh, the hemisphere you're in, at least the southern part of it, it's going to be talking about Venezuela, a Bolivarian revolution that uh, certainly took inspiration from uh, Salvador Allende. And in a way, the coverage here will be saying, you see, this is the kind of mess left-wing governments get uh, Latin American countries and Central American countries into. Well, and that's part of the, the ideological war that's being waged. Um, I mean, part of the war that we saw uh, waged against Chile uh, had a direct uh, military uh, component, of course. Uh, but it was really the, the, the ideological war that was uh, an even more important instrument uh, that was used uh, in that struggle and subsequently. So the, the, the characteristic uh, or the characterizing of the Venezuela process as a failed process, uh, not bringing into, into the equation the fact that uh, the economy has been systematically undermined by the U.S. and other uh, Western forces, uh, is part of that ideological uh, war. And we understand uh, why it's being waged, and we understand the potential consequences of that. But, you know, we're not surprised at th those kinds of characteristics. Uh, we're not surprised that people are not talking about the, uh, the undermining of the peace process uh, in Colombia. Uh, we're not surprised that people are, are calling for um, more Western intervention uh, into the region. Of course, uh, tomorrow is also 17 years since uh, another 9-11, the one in Washington and uh, New York. Do you think there'll be much uh, time spent in uh, the United States reflecting on the impact of U.S. foreign policy that some argue catalyzed that 9-11? Well, you know, it remains to be seen as, as we, 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 we get further and further away from the original uh, incident. Uh, we, we can see that the state has been quite successful in using that attack uh, to, to rationalize its aggressive uh, policies uh, around the world. Uh, we know that the so-called war on terror continues. But the kinds of connections that should be made on 9-11, we don't think will be made. I mean, it's, it's completely ironic, or maybe consistent, that we had this war on terror launched on 9-11, um, 2001, and against al-Qaeda. Uh, but today, in Syria, we see that the Trump administration has warned the Syrian government uh, not to uh, in, in, in involve itself in a, a, a military attack on a territory that's being basically controlled by uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, and there's no political reaction, no political outcry uh, from, the, from the U.S. population or uh, U.S. political representatives. So it calls into question or really reveals the, the, uh, the phoniness of this war on terror and the fact it's been used as an instrument to advance U.S. global hegemony more than anything else. Those kinds of connections are not going to be made uh, on 9-11 this year, but many of us will make those connections. So you mean Britain and the United States are repeating history again supporting Islamists like they did the Mujahideen in Afghanistan that would create al-Qaeda? Those forces are, are, have been, uh, have been uh, very valuable to them. Without the, those forces, uh, there'd be no justification for, for Britain and for the U.S. to still be physically in the Middle East, militarily. Well, from the British media viewpoint, the public came out to mourn uh, a great U.S. politician recently, John McCain, who, of course, did uh, support uh, all those policies, whether it be uh, in Afghanistan pre or post 9-11. Uh, what did you make of the eulogies to Senator John McCain? Uh, an attempt to, to engage in the most 
crass um, and strange historical revisionism that I've seen in quite some time. It was a, a individual that uh, is a recognized warmonger who has not seen a, a, a conflict and intervention by the U.S. or the Western Alliance uh, that he was opposed to. Yet he is lionized as a, uh, a warrior for peace. There were also tweets from uh, British politicians, none from the British leader Jeremy Corbyn, but Jeremy Corbyn's pendant pair, as it were, over there, Bernie Sanders, he disagrees with what you just said uh, quite a lot. He tweeted saying McCain was a, was a great man. Well, that's the kind of, of, of liberal and left opportunism that we see not only in the U.S., but really throughout the, the Western world. It is, it is opportunism and, and it is political confusion. Uh, we're not going to be able to move the people into uh, real sustained opposition uh, to the 1 percent as long as we allow ourselves to, to be manipulated in this ideological war, uh, to prop up um, and to legitimize individuals who are opposed to everything that people like Bernie Sanders says he is supposed to be uh, in favor of. But in another sense, uh, Bernie Sanders' position is, 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 is consistent. I remember, he was the one that said that the Saudis should get their, their hands dirty uh, in the so-called Middle East. And right after that is when you have the uh, Obama and Saudi war being launched uh, in Yemen. So these are, this is the nature of uh, progressive politicians uh, in places like the United States of America. Well, just finally, and very briefly, we talked about the Chilean anniversary, the uh, Washington, New York 9-11 anniversary. Uh, this, uh, in the next few days, is the 10-year anniversary of the collapse of Lehman Brothers on Wall Street. Uh, what do you think that means as to how we should reflect a decade on from the beginning of the crash that would, of course, uh, create austerity? Well, you know, the connection that should be made, which should be the, the, the obvious um, uh, 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 conclusion, that there is a crisis, a crisis of capitalism uh, that has had a, a, a negative impact on millions of people uh, around the world, uh, and that um, this should be another uh, wake-up call or a reminder, if you will, that we're not going to be able to address the material needs of, of the people globally as long as we continue to allow this, this, this greedy 1 percent to prop up a system uh, that is in fundamental decline. So making that connection, looking seriously at, at the structure of the U.S. economy um, and around the world, uh, looking at uh, the kinds of jobs that are being created, uh, looking at the kinds of, of, of uh, a rip off that's still occurring, uh, taking U.S. and populist uh, resources from the uh, pockets of the people into the military industrial complex pockets, uh, these are the kinds of connections we should be able to make, uh, but we aren't. John Baraka, thank you. My pleasure.